Okay. So the first two videos were no audio of this video. Thank, thank you, Something Productions, for pointing it out. I didn't realize until after I made the second one that he had pointed it out. <clears throat> but then I started recording this one, and then I muted myself. <laughs> so I did... I don't know how far I watched this. I'm just going to say, please watch the full video yourself. I'm just going to react to it real quick. <laughs> so uh, this is the plasmoid tech, which he... The, I mean, honestly, is not the worst. Within that. This stuff is pretty interesting. I might have even... I was thinking about just continuing, but I, it was probably at least a half hour of me not actually having audio, so out of 50 minutes, and so I probably, yeah, but I more closely went through this, and I kind of like this concept of it maybe stacking the energy to make it more like a sandwich, and more like cohesive maybe, more layered, but whether or not this does what he's saying, uh, Generally speaking, I found this somewhat interesting, not inconclusive. I wouldn't say unequivocally that it doesn't do what he's saying, but he certainly in no way has like connected the dots enough to make it clear to me that this device and so this plasmoid generator he's talking about basically according to him i believe maybe this is good that i can try to re recap essentially it transmits energy from like a power plant to the ionosphere to a schumann cavity which may or may not have a schumann resonance like name drop or or actual significance i'm not sure i tried to look for schumann cavity the first time i was recording this and couldn't find anything so it's probably something that he's maybe just calling it that because it's some relationship to the schumann resonance so it has some merit in his interpretation of things at least that there's some relationship to it and that's why it's there or something i don't, I don't know but essentially, this cavity here at the ionosphere and then being a space for energy to be transmitted to, which then allows for other devices, I guess, to somehow access it and use it <clears throat> wirelessly. So it's kind of like power generation This along the lines of Tesla, <clears throat> which I was talking about in that video, how... Um, he didn't really have like a theory in the same sense as Newton and Einstein and was much more towards inventions with like theoretical reasonings, but like he didn't like put together a cohesive theory as far as I know. So it's much more based off of, like, piecemealing his work together to, like, kind of see a overall view of how he saw things. <clears throat> but it's kind of... I don't like the name drop of Tesla. And the, the, I don't also didn't like in this the singularity of Tesla. It's something that happens, I think, a lot in alternative physics types of... Uh, focuses is a focus on Tesla's work specifically and al almost like attempting in the same way as classical mechanics was replaced, if you will, for a time by general relativity and quantum mechanics. Like it's a new theory. It's like trying to basically do the same again with Tesla's work, essentially. But there's really not a theory cohesively. 
And so I don't find it very compelling to be singular focus. Uh, I mean, I see why, because of how, like, much he advanced society, like, legitimately. And, like, clearly he is worth studying. I just don't think that this, like, tendency of, ver like, essentially taking his route as being the route uh, is sufficient. Like, maybe maybe it, there is, like, merit that I, I haven't looked nearly as much into Tesla as, and his ideas as, like, Malcolm probably has, presumably, but, like, so it's possible that there's things that I haven't appreciated about it, but at the same time, like, I am generally aware, and I know there's definitely, I mean, for sure there's things I don't appreciate about it, appreciate about it, but, like, I just don't think it's, like, it's actually the next paradigm in and of itself. Like, it doesn't, it's not going to be like that. It's really going to be more like this rainbow thing where many things are part of one thing that really probably just stems back to classical mechanics because that's, uh, you know, maybe I'm biased here. <laughs> but this general concept, I mean, I just kind of took his word for it. what he had to say about this region, these things here, these images, it wasn't terrible. At some point he goes here, like this stuff wasn't, wasn't bad, like I kind of was feeling the potential, I just don't see how this, this device uh, that he, as he's described would do the things like specifically like it's one thing to like spin a wheel and like have some currents flowing around it it's another to actually like distill them separate them into their specific frequencies by the rotation in the locations like this like it I don't know if this really makes any sense whatsoever but I'll for the benefit of the doubt like generally okay fine it's interesting I'll give him that that it's interesting and maybe he's got something but that I don't appreciate but so far, I'm not completely moved whatsoever. This I found a little odd. The, like launch, like essentially because it's shooting this plasmoid to the ionospheres that so like spacecraft can ride a ride the wave out to the ionosphere as well as payloads. And uh, I didn't. I found that a little odd, but uh, whatever. So be it. Um, plasmoid power. Okay, let me just kind of talking about plasmoids. And this one, this slide was a little more relevant. Use of these new technologies will lead to cleaner air. I mean, these are just generally things that should be our objectives reasonably. Uh, so whether or not it does it is a whole nother thing. Applications under consideration include, okay, fine. And then at some point, he's going to start talking about more specifics here. Plasmoid is a coherent structure of plasma and magnetic fields. They are found naturally in thunderstorms and more specifically in ball lightning. Plasmoids can be used to cause the separation of water into its constituent parts of hydrogen and oxygen. <clears throat> okay, let's find the next slide. Sorry, guys, I really messed up these three videos. <laughs> I guess it wasn't meant to be. Maybe I wasn't meant to do this reaction at all. I mean, I was. I'm like, am I gonna really make it through 15 videos if I get like convinced by five that this is some stretch, let's say, and then. Uh, Maybe not, but I would like to make it through them all, but it looks like I 
Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention. That's cool. Let's go on. So, plasmoids once created are charged from the exhaust gases of the internal combustion engines. This I found a little concerning, honestly. Maybe the internal combustion engine optimally functioning <clears throat> won't have, like, imbalances in the emissions, but I feel like this just, just would like be too dirty that was my my interpretation is it would be too uh, sooty like it would if it's going through it so i don't know i know <clears throat> optimally engines aren't like that but there are three stages firstly air is ion ionized using a uv light of a specific frequency Air. Air is not one thing, so ionizing all of it with a singular specific frequency is a little concerning. Maybe had he said, firstly, nitrogen is ionized, which maybe he ultimately is saying, and maybe colloquially generalizing as air, I mean, maybe... And then introduced into the plasmoid generator. Second, plasmoids are formed in water by passing this ionized air through a diffuser, then over a catalyst of stainless steel shavings. Ionized air passes through a diffuser. Then over a catalyst where plasmoids are then generated by collapsing cavitation bubbles, which are created by a vacuum and then imploded by applying pressure. Okay, let's just start here now. I'll just react to the rest of this now all those things which before we had to strive to get. So that'll give people more time to, uh, for their families and more time to do studies into um, these higher levels of knowledge, which goes back to, you know, we have to go backwards to go forwards because, you know, we've lost all that sacred geometry knowledge. We've lost this knowledge that was existent before of these number systems which are un universal. Uh, so, um, anyway, so um, plasmoids once created a charge from the exhaust gases of internal combustion and this is then used as an energy source and to convert the normal harmful emissions from such engines into water and hydrogen. So, um, there are three stages. The first here is ionised using UV light of a specific frequency hence the star in the jar, that purple light is UV light um, at a specific frequency, and then introduced in the INSAT plasmoid generator. So that's the first stage. The second is MSAT plasmoids are formed in water by passing this ionised air through a diffuser, then over a catalyst of stainless steel shavings. MSAT plasmoids are then generated by collapsing cavitation bubbles, which are created by a vacuum and then imploded by applying pressure. And that's simply the action of a piston. Uh, pressure, vacuum, pressure, vacuum. And the next slide, please. Uh, MSAT plasmoid protein power, finally, cold MSAT plasmoid and water mixture. And that's water in its gas phase, passes through catalytic tornado resonator, which is our uh, thunderstorm machine. This comprises two spheres. The exhaust gases from the engine charge the MSAT plasmoids energy is released in the form of plasma, which is sufficient to charge, change the molecular structure of the exhaust. Not in molecular structure, but also atomic structure. Energy is also transferred to the MSAT plasma and retained in the water that is in its gas phase, which is then added to the fuel intake of the engine, either through the carburetor or fuel injector in the case of diesel engines. So the next slide, please. Pardon me. Um, I just love then, this rock. Uh, MSAT plasmoids are donut or toroidal shaped clusters of net protons or net electrons 
that once captured and placed into a toroidal orbit are capable of absorbing, storing and releasing enormous amounts of energy present within their self-generated, self-regulated and structured electromagnetic containment field. Now this is just reinforcing, you have a sphere, you push to, which is a bubble, say in water, you push the north and south pole together, so now uh, there's a zero point created between the north pole and the south pole. That creates an equatorial plane, that equatorial plane has another, another two small zero points because now you've created two circles or infinity symbol, yep, so those, those circles uh, then uh, the small gates, and we'll go on in. Another slide uh, shows the relationship around the world with the knowledge of this big gate, which is a zero point, and the two small closed gates. Normally in China, they brick those gates up. Also, um, a lot of the uh, Christian churches also brick those gates up. So um, other temples have them open. But I suppose I posit that, that if you build a temple or you build a pyramid structure, then actually you do, if so facto, have uh, access through geometry to those other um, zero points. But that's a deeper discussion. So basically, IMSAT plasmoids in effect function as a atomic battery that can be self-charging due to its ability to convert matter. And that is, uh, the matter we're talking about there is protein, hydrogen, uh, let's just have one electron, one proton, no nucleus, so no nuclear byproducts is very important. Uh, uh, mounted to available clean energy. MSAT plasmoids by the unique sacred geometry cause a consequential electromagnetic containment field that generates a zero point naturally and casually without much effort, have the ability to convert the atomic mass of protein, the atoms, into usable energy. Next, thanks. So, uh, and this goes back to the, our unification model, and we've already gone over that, so we'll go to the next slide, but it's important that people uh, reinforce those points, is that you're talking about minus 259.2, uh, relating to the great year of 25,920 years. The reason I keep repeating this is everyone has to understand the relationship between time and matter. So if you don't understand the relationship between, between time and matter, that's the basis of the next industrial revolution. If you do not understand that or do not care to understand that, it means it holds society back to the glass ceiling we have at the moment where our maths doesn't work anymore and at the level we're at now, and our science doesn't work anymore at the level I have now. Our planet is unsustainable using the technologies we use now. So by enlightenment of saying, hey, we don't want to destroy our planet. We, if we have free resources, we don't have to have wars over those resources. Um, so therefore, the chance of complete uh, self-annihilation, uh, which you're standing on the brink of at the moment, is less. So anyway, the next slide. Uh, yeah, just again, uh, reinforcing that, uh, you know, this universal, uh, yeah, but it's the universe's intelligent design. Now, <laughs> uh, I was told when I was at university that there was some great big gas cloud that randomly formed the planet. Or people say, oh, well, things just through radioactive decay, we form everything and that's fine. But they're random, unstructured events. So therefore, you need an intelligent uh, entity to, in, there is a blueprint. And, and uh, for our solar system, for the universe, a blueprint for all, all life and a blueprint by which our bodies grow uh, which you call the soul, so the soul of the planet, the soul of the body, the soul of the universe, is you know, through the zero point, there is no time <laughs> space. So everything is both existing at the one point in time uh, and all points in time at the same time. And all points in space and one point in space all at the same time. We have everything, you have nothing, and when you have nothing, you have everything. So this paradox has escaped uh, our society for a few thousand years and hopefully that paradox will be realised through the model of the elements and then applied through the application of that because the sacred geometry I would say is the key that opens the door to knowledge and if you throw away that key which we've done through our, the ignorance of our scientific community and I actually I suppose it's too generous to say science I think um, you know it's probably more accurate that 
when lab rats live in cages and have no uh, relationship or metric with the real world, then they become more and more removed from it. Then you have lab rats teaching lab rats teaching lab rats. So we have to get out of that cycle. It's destructive and not productive. And so therefore, we need to go back to the 18th century again, start again, because the 18th century was great because people were simply observing nature and copying it. Now, we're just you know, observing exotic mass and really um, getting more and more removed from creation, more and more removed from nature, and more and more removed from the natural process of nature, which were you know, very much the work of um, uh, Victor Charles Berger uh, on the relation to water, and with Walter Russell in relation to the elements, and obviously Nikola Tesla. Schauberger, excellent work. In relation to uh, tapping those energies from Who did he a second? I did not know that systems, person. Rather than trying to force energy out of more removed from nature and more and more removed from the natural process of nature, which oh, were, right. you know, yeah, I didn't know that, Mark. I can't even, I didn't so recognize. Very much the work of um, uh, Victor Charles Berger uh, on the relation to water and with Walter Russell in relation to the elements and obviously Nikola Tesla in relation to uh, tapping those energies from uh, those okay, he's talking about electric universe. Okay. existing natural systems rather than trying to... I know, is he? This one I like much better. Well, it's already much better because it actually has the spiral. His is stepped. It doesn't actually have a spiral. And then it has the inert gases going this way, which is more like a balance than this way. This is like a total out of balance, like a free fall. This is balance. So it kind of makes sense, like subtly out of balance would require something that's like out of balance opposite and to bring it back to like a balanced equilibrium. I like this one too. But I want to say his has that same spiral connectedness, it just has that step. It's like a f fundamental thing. That... Just isn't there, probably. Force energy out of materials with explosive technology, which is toxic. So basically, uh, I think uh, the next slide. So um, this goes back again to the uh, propulsion using matter as a propulsion device, as uh, we said earlier in this section. Uh, but it is the reason we're repeating this is that this is the last slide, and we're going on to the next section, section four, uh, which will just show you here what what we'll be presenting in the next presentation. Will be uh, MSAT plasmoids Vajra in ancient history which is a very exciting uh, connection. Cool. Uh, mainly uh, the work of 
Randall Carlson going back in history and putting that part together because uh, geometry and history uh, something that you have to understand as I keep saying the further you can go back in history the further you can go forward in life if you refuse to study history you'll be cursed to repeat the mistakes of history so um, you know so if you understand the past you can build the future so that's what we're doing here is going back as the first step to knowledge is going back to the past knowledge and then building on it not simply you know throwing it in the rubbish bin and denying that it's there okay so that's that one uh sorry about another failure in my audio that made this one also not what i was intending <laughs> So I kind of just went through this one and caught up to where I was and then continued watching, but that's okay. Made it a little shorter. Uh, feel free. You know, obviously, if you're interested in this, hopefully you're just watching him alone also to not have me just pausing continuously like, oh my god, dude, mid-sentence. He didn't finish his thought. Why? Why won't he let him finish his thought? If you could only just finish.